In terms of the insurance, here we see the insurance consists of policy number, company name, phone, VIN, effective date, expiration date, point of contact, first and last name for you know whoever is at the insurance company, and the insurance company, street, city, state, and zip. Scrolling down, we see employees, and that consists of social, phone, title, name, first and last name, and of course, address, street, city, state, and zip. Now related to employees might be employee dependent. An employee dependent might have a phone relation such as husband, wife, child, name, and even address. Now you might have address in the case that uh, you know, you're working in uh, Houston but your spouse has a job in Dallas and he or she might be uh, working there. Once we've defined all the entities we're ready to create a main ER diagram. So what I did here, as you see in the notes, I took all the entities that I defined above and I started to group them together that would kind of make sense. And it seems like, okay, driver division that would be like at the high level and there are offices within a driver division and then it has employees and closely related to that is employee dependent. Then over here we have driver insurance and vehicle title. So it's an informal process initially to say, okay, these kind of fit together. Now with these entities we want to add relationships and we have to start thinking about well, how does this all fit together and how these entities relate to each other. Now as we scroll down you see that I've done something like this. The driver division might track employees and an employee has dependents and the driver division has offices and the vehicle, title, driver and insurance all participate for registering a vehicle at a particular office. So all I'm showing here initially in this uh, ER, EER diagram draft is how the entities might relate to each other via relations. Once you're comfortable with that, the next step would be to add the cardinality, which refers to how many instances participate in relation. And in my little EER diagram here, I would assume that the driver division is only one, but it might track many employees. And uh, employees, I would assume many employees or one employee might have many dependents, but maybe there might be a child and both their parents work at the uh, you know, Department of Public Safety, so I'd assume it could be many the other way. Now, if you look previous notes, it said it, this really should be a one, but my best guess is I, I, I'm comfortable with a, an M here. Now, driver division, one division has multiple offices, now when we think about registering a vehicle, one driver might register multiple vehicles and have multiple insurances. One vehicle but could be co-owned by uh, multiple drivers with multiple insurances. So it seems like there's M, M, and M all participating in this registration process. Now even though I'm using M here, M here, and M here, I'm not implying that this M equals this M equals this M in value. All I'm saying is that there are multiple instances that are participating. Now if you were to present this in a report to your client, you would probably put the main ER diagram as I have here as your one of your first pages and all those other diagrams behind it. So when a client sees this, they see, oh, okay, this is the big picture in terms of how everything fits together. Notice here I've left off all the attributes. Now, if I had an attribute for the relations, then they would be included. The reason I leave out the attributes is to suppress the details so the client can abstract and get a clean idea of the big picture in terms of what's going on. Now once you've finished this diagram, the next step is to map this to 
a database, one or more database tables. And in this context, we have to be very, pay very careful attention to the cardinality of the relations. Now, essentially, there are three types of cardinality. One-to-one, one-to-many, or many-to-one, which is a second, and many-to-many. -many. So here I have an example of two entities, entity X, entity Y, participating in relation R, and attributes A and B, where A is the key, and C and D, where C is the key. Well, obviously, we'd have one table would be X, A, B, and another table would be Y, C, D. But the question is, what do we do with this relationship? And what we observe is we can do one of two things. We can set up an intermediate uh, table. And intermediate table means we take the key out of entity X, the key out of entity Y, so it's the A and the C, and they would form their own key in this relation we'll just call the uh, intermediate table R. So it would be RAC. Now in this case we have a one value here and a one value here. So going from Y to X it only refers to one value. Going from X to Y it only refers to one value. So a second design approach for a one a cardinality of one to one is to have a foreign key from X to Y and a foreign key from Y to X. So X might be A B plus the C, which is the key over here, and Y would have C D plus the key over there. So in a one to one we have two design options as I've shown there, intermediate table or foreign keys. Second approach deals with a one-to-many or a many-to-one. In this particular approach, it gets a little bit tricky because there's a one over here. This is a one-to-many. So Y can refer to exactly one instance over in X, but instant X would refer to many more than one instance in Y. So like before, we can set up an intermediate you know, or set up our initial tables A, B, and C, D. And we can also do an intermediate table. But the foreign keys get a little bit tricky. X could not have a foreign key in Y because if we set up, let's say, A, B, C, it could be different values of C, so that would create a problem. However, we could have a foreign key from Y to C and then set up, for example, A, B, X, A, B, and set up Y, C, D with the A as the foreign key back to entity X. Finally, when we have a many to many, such as entity X and Y as shown below, we can do our intermediate table, R, A, C as before, but we, we cannot have a foreign key because that would cause a violation uh, in, in this case. So if I said, uh, for example, student enrolls in courses and the student has the student social security number uh, as the key and then we wanted to have a foreign key to faculty and have like faculty SSN, well we couldn't do that because a student could enroll in let's say three classes and we wouldn't know which SSN, faculty SSN to place in, as a foreign key. So that's why we cannot have foreign keys when it's a, you know, going to a many uh, relation. Okay, scrolling down, you see my solution for the Texas Department of Public Safety example. And you see I've set up tables for office, vehicle title, driver, insurance, registration, employees, and employee dependents. You also see the keys are underlined for each of the corresponding tables. And the only thing I'll mention here is employee dependence. I put the social security number of the employee relations such as spouse or husband, wife, child. If you have multiple children, then you might identify them with the first and last name. So we'll stop here and go on to the next set of videos.